is only war. What is up, gents? 40k Dirtbags here. We are doing an updated Grey Knights tactical video of things that have been working, list ideas, and kind of group combos that you're going to be trying in 10th edition upcoming games. So I've gotten about four or five games in with Grey Knights now, all competitive lists, all competitive uh, opponents, and we've been playing the tactical and uh, set missions uh, since we started, and we've just been talking about it on Discord uh, all the time, going over list ideas, helping each other out, stuff like that. So um, that's what this whole video is going to be about, is kind of like ideas and tactics of the updated version compared to the one that we did prior uh, before we got to run and test the new units. So after testing the units, I'm going to tell you what I've been seeing that's been working and what are things you should be gearing towards moving forward into the edition. So first off, thanks for clicking on the video. If you guys are new, uh, we do run Grey Knights, uh, Chaos Space Marines, Death Guards, Sisters, Custodies. Uh, those are the main armies that we play on the channel. And also we play against all the different armies on 40K. So if you guys are 40K, definitely hit the subscribe and like. Uh, we've been growing super fast lately and our Patreon has been hit uh, over $500 a month. We're already close to 600 already. Uh, we're giving away all this shit to my left here. Uh, this is gonna be our first Patreon live stream giveaway. So if you guys are Patreon, you guys have a chance to win all these uh, or you know any one of these things when we do a raffle drawing so if you guys are grandmasters competitive just a car you guys are gonna have uh, points based off of uh, how many you're, you're putting in and then uh, if you guys are putting a dollar up you get early access to all the videos and you still have a chance to join and win some dirtbag dice as well as some dirtbag stickers so appreciate all my patreons thanks for supporting the channel so let's get into the video uh, I have everything up basically already with the gray knights so we're going to go kind of top to bottom we're going to skip over a lot of data sheets and again this is going to be what has been working for me coming in uh with all the games we've been playing so far so let me zoom in on all this stuff so you guys can see now i love that they put the chaplain up front because we don't use the chaplain uh they still haven't updated the chaplain which i'm not sure why they basically just look over gray knights and don't really care uh, but teleport assault you get to pick up three units, which is super good I'm actually starting to make a list that is basically rotating Three big units every single turn and most of the time They're not gonna be able to kill all three big units if not one big unit uh, And then a way to kind of like have sigil work for you have the grandmaster free strat work for you and have crow and his purifiers Just tank most of the shit uh, ignoring almost AP two weapons because of the stratagems so this is super cool uh now again we've been playing that you get to pick them up on turn one because it doesn't say anything about not coming in on turn one uh if you come in from reserves or deep strikes yes you can't come in until turn up turn two unless you have first of the fray but with teleport assault if you start on the table and your opponent goes first at the end of their movement phase you can pick up three units and basically redeploy them uh, in your movement phase or at the end of your movement phase um, outside nine inches away from the enemy uh, opponent so Make sure you're doing that on, on turn one if you're not going First if you're going first you can't really do it because it's at the end of the movement phase But that's the first thing then we have uh, teleport shunt This has been you know getting across the table pretty pretty reliably I've been doing this with my strikes strikes in the command phase basically advance uh, move six inches get uh, sticky objectives and then on their movement phase first turn you just run them 12 inches to another objective and just camp until the next uh next turn so basically just 12 inch move strikes is pretty freaking good uh and then all the stratagems so the stratagems that i've really been uh using mostly is i've used this once on titan on um uh knights and i think i did four or four four or five sixes with all my paladins. Uh, so it's not bad when you have a 10 man brick of terminators or paladins that get you know four attacks each, the, the paladins hit on twos, and then they're gonna be winning on sixes most of the time anyway with big vehicles. So you're basically just fishing for sixes. If you compare it with uh, uh, Dreadnought right near you, you get to reroll once uh, to hit and wound. So that's a good little combo, but I've only used this once so far. I don't really try to use two CP strats unless it's in dire need, which we were in dire, in dire need of that, uh, that Knights are, uh, list. So death from the warp is, um, this, I haven't used this that often. I try and save my CP for the other two ones, but this one is good if you want to advance your paladins up to the top floor and then shoot down, uh, because you're going to be able to uh, advance up and then still shoot. 
uh, but I usually just use the teleport to put them on top of the building anyway. So I don't really use the advance and shoot because I don't really need to. Um, you could use this if you come in with crow uh, in their deployment zone. Uh, I usually come in though within three inches with crow on turn one or two. Uh, and then th they just come in uh, for one CP and just nuke either characters or something off the table uh, with all of their anti-infantry two plus. And then if the opponent uh, overwatches you, which most of the time they do, they kill at least one model potentially one maybe two that way all of you guys hit on two anyway because <laughs> they're purifiers so you don't really need this strat uh unless you're specifically like launching up your your terminators or paladins up to a second floor to get plunging fire if i'm not really getting plunging fire i'm not going to waste my one cp on this strat this one i use all the time uh so this is going to get us behind enemy lines pretty easily this is going to get us to be able to steal objective markers pretty easily because you can fit a lot of models within three inches on an objective marker if they have one or two models on there already uh you see this in a bunch of my videos where i'll, I'll drop in three or four or five guys on an objective and they only have one vehicle or one guy on that objective so you're able to steal that in their command phase and kind of shoot you know coming within three inches anyway so this is probably one of my most used strats uh, it's it's just super clutch because you don't really need a charge. You just need to come down, steal an objective, and shoot uh, something off the objective. Haloed and Soulfire. This is really good for the free CP strat with your Grandmaster. I've used this a bunch of times. This is just so they can't get shot after they use Teleport Assault or arrive from Deep Strike uh, unless they're within 12 inches. So I haven't spent the CP for this. I did uh, the one CP for the Grandmaster in my first video, uh, but most of the time it's really free with the Grandmasters walking uh, with this. So I usually don't have two CP. <laughs> I usually spend it on this uh, and then this and this. So my three most used strats are come within three inches, uh, Mist of Deimos, and True Silver Armor. These three strats are incredible for Grey Knights. So if I can save my CP and not really do these three, and more focus on these three, these are gonna be able to uh, make you last a lot longer and be more defensive teleporting all over the all over the map. So Mist of Deimos, some people ask, if they don't move, can you still proc it? No, they have to actually move or end their move uh, within nine inches of you. So if they just stay frozen and don't move or they move out of nine inches of you, uh, you can't proc this. So it has to be ending a move within nine inches of one of your units to be able to pick your unit up and get them off the table. So this is uh, just a really good strat to be super defensive, especially with your 10 man bricks. So Crow comes down, you know, within three inches, tries to block off most of uh, the units, and then they shoot and kill a bunch of characters or whatever you gotta do. And then their whole army can't end within nine inches of you or you just get the fuck out, out, out of dodge. Now, to combo with that is you have this, where if they don't move with the nine inches of you, you can then just save your one CP that you were gonna spend on this one instead. So it reduces the uh, AP of all the attacks by one. So if they're in cover, they're gonna be a two up save, uh, go down to a one up save, cause you get a cover save even if you have a two up save, unless it's AP. Um, and then on an AP two, you're gonna still have a two up cover save. So anything AP two, or below, you're gonna have a two up cover save. Anything AP three, which are like plasmas and, and huge, you know, really hard hitting attacks, you're gonna have a, a three up cover save. So that's why it's so good because two up saves in cover with all these fucking shots coming in um, is, is huge. True silver armor is amazing on a 10 man unit uh, in cover, <laughs> especially with all of our units having a two up save now. So I don't care if, uh, like before we used to have a three up save, now the entire army is a two up save, so I don't care throwing them across the table, landing right next to a fucking Forge Fiend, and to be like, come at me, bro. So then you have a three up save uh, in cover against the Forge Fiends. So, really, really good. Then uh, these ones, I've really mainly been using Sigil. I haven't tested out, I haven't spent the 35 points to get first of the fray yet, and these two, I haven't done at all <laughs> so i don't i haven't really done a lot of charging i've done mainly shooting and kind of teleporting all over the place um but getting the eight inch charge doesn't seem that bad i'd rather put this on my grandmaster than inescapable wrath so the characters that i've been using is like a a, a libby a grandmaster crow 
and we did Drago once. I used a Brotherhood Champion once as well. So Brotherhood Champion is with the strikes. He has to be on the table. So giving him, you know, Sigil of Exigence, not really good. He already has fight first. So the charges and stuff doesn't really matter. Uh, first of the fray would be good for like a 10 man unit or um, like Drago can't use it, but a Grandmaster first of the fray with 10 Paladins, uh, spending one CP to get um, the teleport thing. You come in turn one. It's just, it's, it seems good. Again, I haven't tried it, but mainly Sigil is going to be almost a must have in every single list. Even if you put it on a solo Libby, this is such a clutch um, power to bring into uh, into the into the effect. So I usually put this on my Grandmaster. So, and I'll go over the Grandmaster strats uh, for that. So let's go down. Drago. Drago is really good uh, just to get, you know, turn two coming in and then deep striking and getting behind enemy lines or just disrupting uh, the backfield. Because you're going to be able to come down, you know, within nine and then get that six inch charge. And then when you charge in, you're going to be able to hopefully pile in and consolidate um, to get across the enemy uh, battlefield. So Drago is still not bad uh, when it comes to charging and just being super aggressive. So if you're going to be running Drago, I would definitely be running either 10 Paladins, uh, five Terminators or 10 Terminators. Um, most likely probably 10 terminators so you come down with 10 terminators you have uh they're all opsec three with the banner you can bring one of them back in the command phase uh and if you're going to be aggressive you could do the flamers to try and just burn some chaff when you come down with bolters and flamers and then charge something else that's a really good combo because then if they fall back you can either get out of dodge or you can um overwatch something that's trying to charge in uh, with with your flamers so flamers aren't bad on terminators uh purifiers i mean Paladins, I really want the side cannons because they hit on twos. So side cannons are better on um, Paladins rather than Terminators because you're hitting on twos. So Drago is really good if you want to be aggressive and put them in with some Terminators, even five Terminators if you want to get um, a rapid ingress and come in at the bottom or top of turn two if you don't have first, uh, just, just to try and you know get up and then get that, that extra charge on some uh, on some units so boldus very very good with paladins so you br uh, bring a 10 just any 10 man unit honestly so he doesn't have the free cp strat like a grandmaster does but he's minus one to hit so your entire squad's going to be minus one to hit with paladins and minus one to wound that combo is really really good so 10 paladins with boldus um, and saving that two cp so that way they can't be shot outside of 12 inches is really good uh, they can come down um, rapid ingress uh, or a teleport assault, go up to the second floor and get that plunging fire. Uh, and then if they shoot back, they're minus one to hit and minus one to wound. That's going to be huge. So he's very good. He's got a, a really good demon hammer, demon hammer that works uh, good in combat. Not too much against vehicles. Like you're still going to be winning on fives, uh, but some vehicles are going to be winning on fours. And then he does some mortal wounds, not not a ton. But you're mainly bringing them because of the subtract one from the hit roll. So then we got a Grandmaster. This is the one I've been running a lot. Um, you give them the side cannon. So basically you have six side cannons in your Paladin 10 man brick. You have five in the unit. Uh, for every two you could bring, or every five you could bring two, so that's four. And then the banner can get upgraded to bring an extra side cannon. So you're at five side cannons for Paladins. And then the Grandmaster brings an extra one. So basically you're going to be able to go 18 side cannon shots all hitting on twos if they're next to a uh, dreadnought you can reroll ones and then you're winning on twos for most infantry rerolling ones uh, if you're shooting bigger targets like possessed or terminators you're winning on threes reroll ones so these guys are really good at killing heavy infantry uh even at two damage like the minus one ap if you're plunging fire minus two ap if they're a terminator and they have three up saves and cover so Three up saves are going to kill a bunch of terminators and possessed. Uh, possessed having a four up save is just disgusting. Like just killing all the possessed really quickly from your uh, from your plunging fire paladins. So I really really like the grandmaster. Um, he gets to do this with the sigil. So basically, turn one or two when he pops up on the second floor to shoot plunging fire. You can then uh, just wait till sigil procs. Um, if they don't shoot them or if they shoot really like small fire into them, you don't have to proc the sigil, you just take it. Uh, and then if like big forge fiend is shooting at him, you just sigil and then go back down to the bottom floor or somewhere out of line of sight or go across the table where they can't shoot you or can't see you, um, you know, once per game. And then your turn, you can move up and charge something. You can move up, shoot something, charge something else. Uh, and then you, if you spend one CP, you can get out of dodge 
come back in on the top floor again, use Plunging Fire, and then proc this once per game for zero CP so that way you can't be shot outside 12 inches. So that's, just think of that 10-man Paladin Brick jumping all over the place, not being able to be shot at is fucking scary for the opponent. Um, and you ignore all this stuff. So you ignore the minus one damage, uh, you ignore minus one to hit, you ignore any stealth effects, you ignore any of that stuff. You don't ignore lone operative, like obviously you, you can't shoot lone operative, but if they have stealth or something like that, you ignore the minus one to hit. So him in a Paladin squad, super super good um i really really like this guy so he's probably my favorite uh leader grandmaster skip not worth it i'm not even gonna go over it crow still super really good character uh, i love i've been playing him every single every ever since he came out add one of the attack characters of purify flame for the entire unit so your 10 man purify break comes in within three inches that's 20 Purify flame shots. If they overwatch you and kill a guy, that's 18 purify flame shots hitting on twos, two up uh, to wound, minus one ignore cover. Then you have four flamers going in, uh, 46, minus one, no cover, strength six. Then you have all the bolters, right? And Crow alone has four um, purify flame shots. So it's 18, 22 purify flame, all the bolters and all the flamers coming in, most of them ignoring cover and AP1. So you can even put them up on um, second or third floor to get plunging fire for this, uh, like the, the AP2 flamer or the uh, AP2 uh, ignore cover purify flame is just such a good combo. I wouldn't take purifiers if I didn't take crow. And he's got this thing which doesn't really happen until he's by himself, which kind of sucks. Once per turn, the first time saving throws fail for this model. The damage character is changed to zero. So you could kind of fuck some people up with that if they're like planning on just shooting with a melt gun or something. Uh, you fail the four up save, then boom, hey, I, I, uh, I get, I, it's turned to zero, right? Um, he's got precision, devastating wounds, uh, precision automatically on a melee weapon is really good. Uh, and it's not psychic, so you can get around that psychic defense. Drink six, AP2, two damage. So still really, really good for him. Captain Cern, I haven't tried. Um, but he would be the combo if you wanted to go with the additional uh, mortal wounds with the devastating wounds. So him with like a 10 man terminator brick um, would be cool. I haven't tried him, so I can't really tell you too much about him. I would, that, but that's the only combo is uh, the one mortal wound plus the devastating wounds for uh, a unit. But I would definitely go a 10 man unit rather than a five man because that two CP isn't really worth it. That two CP would only be worth it if you have a 10 man and combining it with uh, Brother Captain Stern. Then we got Brother Captain. I haven't tried this guy uh, yet. I'd rather go the Grandmaster, but leading units like weapons equipped have the sustain hits. So basically all of your shots have uh, exploding sixes. Uh, each time this model makes an attack with a psychic weapon, you can reroll the wound roll. So basically anytime he shoots with his psych cannon, he can reroll the wound roll, which is which is okay. Uh, I would rather have the Grandmaster ignoring everything and once per game, two CP strat for free. Brother of Champions, super, super deadly. I actually tried him the other day against Knights. Him into Knights, not the best, but him into fucking anybody else is insane. He automatically has the precision. He gives the unit fight first, so if they charge in, you automatically fight before they do. And if there's a character in the model uh, unit, you automatically have precision, and you get to reroll all hit and all wound into that character um, with precision. So this, is, this guy's just insane. 85 points. Uh, two up, four up. Holy shit, he's got four up in one save uh, with five attacks. Precision. Like, this guy's awesome. So if I had an extra 85 points and I wasn't bringing an assassin, this guy would be my, my go-to. Fucking love this guy. Um, maybe trying out three of these guys in one list it would be super fun. I might test that out. Uh, then we got the Libby. Uh, I mean, the, the, the way to go right now might be fucking three librarians i still haven't tried three librarians somebody let me know if three librarians is the way to go like just go all terminators three librarians uh drago crow purifier and and what and fill in with chap because we can't run purgation anymore so you're gonna have a lot of extra points if you want to trade purgations for um, brotherhood librarians running solos of these guys putting a sigil on a, a, on this guy is pretty cool but even running solo and just coming down you know behind a a, a wall that you can only see one unit that you really want to put a um what is it vortex of doom into this gets around lone operative so him doing this coming down just killing an assassin or killing lone operative uh for free um 
is is cool. So he might make up his points back. He's only only 110 points. So he might make his points back up just from one vortex of doom killing a character or a, a lone operative, something like that. So he's not bad uh, solo wise. He's got a two up, four up, five wounds, uh, toughness five. So I mean, he, he's he's going to be pretty tanky if he's landing in cover, which almost everybody gets covered now. So uh, brother Tech Marine. Dread Knights are dead, so it's like maybe I would combine this with the Storm Raven. Mm -hmm. So what you do with the Storm Raven or Thunderhawk Thunderhawk gunship <laughs> is this guy starts on the table. Uh, he gives the Thunderhawk uh, plus one to hit in the command phase. He then hops into the Storm Raven, so the Storm Raven is now hitting on twos, or the Thunderhawk gunship is hitting on twos, uh, and then it flies and does whatever it has to do. Next turn, you can get it out, heal the Storm Raven. Um, you can't give it plus one to hit anymore, but at least you can get out, heal it a little bit, uh, go do an action, you know, somewhere else or, or behind enemy lines. Uh, and then the Thunderhawk or Storm Raven can just fly off and go do, some, do, go do something else. So that would be pretty cool just to combine with a flyer um, or a Land Raider, same thing. You just basically get a Land Raider hitting on twos, hop inside of it, and then move forward. Chaplain, I would skip over. Uh, it's not a leader yet. <laughs> Can't join any units. But the plus one wound is not better than everything else we already went over. Uh, then we got the Brother Terminator Squad. I've run maybe two of these guys before, but being able to bring one term like Grey Knight Terminator Brack every single turn is sick. I wish it was the just the command phase but it says in your command phase. Uh, so you have to wait till your command phase to bring a, a Terminator back. So having five man units of these is really good because if you have a 10 man unit, you can still only bring one Terminator back. So if you have a, a bunch of five man Terminators with librarians running around, it's gonna be really hard to remove them off the table, um, especially if you give them limited access and you're hopping around all over the place. So if they end with a nine of you, you can just get, get the fuck out of Dodge. But if they shoot you, you can kill like the closest terminator then in your command phase you make one two inches forward to the extent to extend the the charge range so you're making it within coherency two inches forward plus the base is about two inches so basically you went from a five inch move to now a nine inch move uh just by bringing a terminator back and any leader that they're in they get uh, lethal hits on the charge so that'll be that'll be that'll help out with uh higher toughness targets like tanks uh, strike squads really good <laughs> like putting them uh at least one one unit of strike in every single list but i put a side cannon on them i uh, don't really need the flamer i want to you know be able to shoot one time or three times from afar uh but uh sticky objectives is really because we're hopping around all over the place uh they can then scout out move makes let's say you have first turn you scout out move make something sticky and then uh run somewhere else so that way so let's say you go, let's say you go second. All right. So in the, in, no, you'd have to go first. So you move up, uh, in your first turn, they're making a, a thing sticky in your command phase. They then can back up off the, off the objective because it's already sticky. So if they walk up, make something sticky. And then in your movement phase, they back up. So you can't get charged it's still sticky, you, you don't care about it anymore. And then at the end of their movement phase, you can then pick that strike unit up and fucking put them on your other home objective, and now your other home objective is sticky, so that way you can move off it and not have to worry about it. Because most of the time, they're not gonna get near your home objective, it's gonna be like there's more outskirt objectives. So if you're starting on, on the outskirt objectives with these guys, uh, you can then make them sticky and then teleport them safely uh, towards you to make your home objective sticky. I use these guys more of like uh, blockades, so if you kind of te teleport them, make something sticky, and then uh, string them out, it stops them from getting across the table um, to your, you know, paladin units or, or, or terminator units or characters or purg it used to be purgation squad, not anymore. But they can't get across uh, them because of these guys. And if you put a brotherhood champion in there, they're going to be able to fight first and do some damage before um, anything else. So these guys are probably one of the best units, like um, battle line units in the game with everything that they do. Paladin squads, I'm actually running a lot of them in 10th edition. Uh, just being able to have three side cannons per five man unit with the banner, so they are obsec two on the on the Paladins. Uh, two up, four up, and the minus one to wound if anything is strength uh, six or five is greater than, greater than the toughness. So anything strength six or higher 
which mostly everything is nowadays, uh, it's going to be minus one to wound. So adding one to the objective secured, um, everything everything hits on twos now. So their BS is two, which is which is new. So ballistic skill hitting on twos and weapon skill hitting on twos. You don't really need to put flamers on these guys because you don't want to get you don't want to waste the two up ballistic skill. So two up ballistic skill super good with uh, side cannons. So these guys are fucking insane. Putting them with a ten man with um, the Grand Master, you, you you're, you're gonna try it and you're gonna fucking love it. Uh, trust me, it's a really, really good combo. Uh, purifiers, again, 10-man, Crow, come down within three and just nuke. They have to get their points back. So they're 395 points. Um, so if they come down, kill like a character or two, or kill, um, let's say, a squad of possessed. Uh, against Mike, I was playing a game, and I could have came down and just nuked a squad of possessed. Bikes, bikes you don't get the, the two up because they're bikes. But uh, cultists, possessed, and then just shoot some of the bikes. And then they're uh, they're just waiting, so they're far enough away to not be charged by something else. But they kill enough so that way next turn I can do something else to the other possess unit or the other terminator unit or whatever it may be. But they have to come down and get their points back uh, to make it up. So they are the super aggressive, come down and just kill something unit, especially with all their uh, two up ignore cover. Then we got the servitors. Haven't run them yet. I'd rather bring uh, inquis inquisitors, uh, inquisitor henchmen people, the 35 point guys. So haven't brought these guys, not really looking at them, not looking to bring them for 40, 50 points. Like, fuck that. Venerable Dread, uh, I was running three purgation squads uh, as of yesterday <laughs> with the with the Venerable Dread right behind them. So the paladins were within six inches and three purgation squads were behind cover within six inches so they're all rolling one to hit and one to wound so it was it was a really 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 good combo now that they're 190 points i'm probably getting rid of the venable dread uh and the purgation squad so that gives me like 725 points that i just gained in my list that i can put a knight in some other units like whatever it may be but it's going to be a completely different list uh it just didn't do too much I, I played knights the knight ran in hit it once with its claw did D6 plus two damage, rolled a six and did eight damage. And look how many wounds he has, eight. <laughs> so the minus one uh, to um, damage uh, definitely played played a factor, uh, but he just, he just died. So, and he doesn't hit, he hits on fucking threes. If he hit on twos, I would, I would bring him, but he hits on threes with basically, I don't know why the storm boulder hits on twos, that's, that's dumb. So everything else hits on three. So I always miss or I don't wound with the twin link, the last cannon. So I probably am not gonna bring it unless my list specifically brings a Storm Raven, or I wanna literally just put everything around these guys. Let's say I have two 10-man Paladin bricks uh, near my Venerable Dread. It might go Venerable Dread in the middle, two-man Paladin bricks, uh, plunging fire, and just shooting all twos, reroll ones, and then wounding mostly on threes and twos, rerolling ones. That might be a good list to try. Or um, Storm Maven with one of these guys, Crow, 10 Purifiers, and a, uh, a Tech Priest. That would be a really good combo as well. So what is that What is that points? So we have 265 points for the Storm Raven, I believe. 200, it might be 260, plus 395, plus 155. So it's 810 points for that combo. And it's a really good combo. The only reason you can't run that combo right now is because they didn't touch towering if they would have got rid of towering or made towering less effective it would be really good but towering still in the game so when you start your storm raven on the table it literally just gets shot off the table if you come in from um uh reserves uh at the end of their movement phase still towering's there he just turns around and shoots your storm raven off the table so it's not you're basically going to play all those points and you're not going to get effective because of fucking towering so towering kind of ruining the game for a lot of shit that we want to play Interceptors, I'd stopped using them. Uh, they just don't. I mean, they're good. They're quick. They can still be in rhinos. It's just they're expensive. They're 165 points. Uh, they get to move after they shoot, so they get across the table very, very well. But they don't have anything like sticky objectives or or anything like that. So, I mean, I could I could run a list with them with maybe like 15 of them, but it's still really expensive. So maybe instead of purgation, you just run these guys running around and they just kind of get the charge off, kind of run up, charge, and try and do some damage. But with the no rerolls, uh, it kind of hinders them. In the one list, you used to give Drago rerolls. You used to uh, spend one CP for reroll ones to hit and wound. Um, 
So that's how they got a lot of their damage and they did mortal wounds on sixes. So losing all of those, they're kind of just strikes that move 12. So they're not really sought after as much. Uh, Purgation Squad, I am sorry. I am sorry. I am sorry. I am sorry. Um, yeah, Dread Knight, I, I, I stopped running. It just doesn't do enough damage. Land Raiders are something that we have to try out. We haven't tried out Land Raiders, but Land Raiders could be another um, offset for the Purgation Squad. But again, we need anti-tank, and the only anti-tank are really just last cannons. So we have multi melters which are going to wound on fives. Uh, we have last cannons, which are strength 12s. So you're going to be wounding on fours against big knights, wounding on three against little knights. But you, you hit on threes, you hit on twos with a um, uh, tech priest. You are toughness 12, so you are going to be getting wounded on fives um, most of the time. And 16 wounds, you have a two-up save, no invuln save. Uh, and speed 10 so they're going to help deliver guys across the table but again what i've noticed is when you get out and you want to charge something if it's a vehicle you're not going to kill it so you're just gonna have to try and shoot it from afar but they have better guns than we do so i don't really want to be in a gunfight i'd rather be in a hide and seek get points and kill you know random shit fight <laughs> that would be my type of it's more like a night lords fight like the night lords are now sorry i'm saying this are great knights great knights are turning into night lords uh, just kind of run, hit, run away. That's that's basically what we're doing in 10th edition. Um, then we got the Crusader. It can bring 18 models, I think, still. 16, all right, they lowered it. So 16 models, you can bring the most with this. Uh, it's got the heavy bolters on the side. You have the um, twin assault cannon, multi-melta, and that's about it. Uh, and then you have the, the Land Raider Redeemer, which is probably the better one, the best one. It's D6 plus 3, uh, D, 2D6 plus 6 shots, uh, ignoring cover. AP 2, 2 damage, strength 6. Uh, then it's got the Multi Melta, Twin Assault Cannon, which is Devastating Wounds, Twin Linked. So you get to reroll wounds. Um, so yeah, I mean, this is, this is just, this thing just mulches fucking infantry. Uh, 16 wounds, brings 14, 14 guys. So you can put a lot of guys in there. Uh, and then the Rhino. Rhino's Fire Deck 2. Uh, I've only brought the Rhino because of Interceptors. Now that Interceptor is no longer a thing. And uh, we have Teleporter Assault in our ranks. Don't really need the vehicles anymore. Um, it sucks because Rhino was like my thing. It's like you need a Rhino every single list. Now it's just 80 points could go more towards something else rather than bringing a Rhino for, uh, for you know, protecting your guys the extra movement again you don't really need because we're not going to try and get into combat as much um and i'm not going to bring a rhino just for one purgation squad or one purifier fuck one uh interceptor squad not going to do it uh razorback haven't tried yet but uh probably would have been cool with the purgation squad hopping out shooting and then um getting to reroll all wounds but this could be a good combo if you want to bring interceptors. So interceptors hop out, shoot something, and then hop back into it. So that way next turn you just do it again. So if you hop out with a side cannon with the interceptors or something, uh, you shoot some bolters down, shoot some side cannons, then hop back in within six inches. Um, you get to get full rolls to wound. So could be something uh, to try out, but haven't, haven't tried it out yet. These guys, again, towering kind of just sucks. So... Storm Raven, we already talked about it. It's got the most firepower that we that we can uh, in 10th edition. But the thing is, I mean, it is minus one damage, so that's really cool. That was something new that was added. Toughness 10, so most things are going to be wounding it on threes to fours, like heavy weapons. Um, 14 wounds, three up save. Wish it had a two up save. Uh, op 6 zero. But it can hold uh, 12 12 and uh, Dreadnought. So that would be the combo once Towering get, kind of gets fixed or we stop seeing Towering uh, Knights running around. But without Towering being going away, uh, Storm Raven Gunship is just going to stay on the shelf, which is kind of sad. So that was the uh, data sheets. Let's go over a picture of the, um, the board and I'll kind of go over some ideas and things that I've been working on right now. Here is an example, um, old school Grey Knight terrain. I know the new terrain is, is a little bit different. Hopefully the, the tables that you're playing on have some type of plunging fire that you're gonna be able to teleport up. But what I've been using is we still use this type of setup kind of for uh, alternate universes. The only diff difference is imagine this like a uh, square rectangle. Uh, there's one right here. Pretend this was like a, a, a ruin. So you can actually hide 
a whole unit in the back, like as far back as you possibly can on the bottom floor, uh, line of sight blocking so that way towering can't see you. And then all of your other guys are basically set up as close as possible to the walls. Uh, as long as you don't get charged, you know, turn one, maybe one inch away from the walls if you guys are playing those rules. So you just kind of like go and set up as close as possible so that way towering can't see through the, the second floor to see your guys. If all of your guys are behind here, they can basically see your guys because they ignore all the rules of the game. And as long as they can see you truly, true line of sight, they'll be able to see you. So anytime you see towering across the table, you have to make sure you set up properly. And if you can't fit most of your guys on the table, um, you have to put them in reserves. You have to put them in deep strike or, or whatever it may be. Deep strike most likely for Grey Knights, uh, but you have to make sure you don't get shot turn one with towering. That is gonna be the goal for us with Grey Knights. If they don't have towering, or if they have like something that's walking on towering, then you can kind of set up normally. And if you put your guys like, you know, one there, one here behind the thing, so you can't get crazy angles on them, one up here, that's gonna be the best way to deploy Grey Knights is try not to be seen at all from towering. All right, because if they have first turn, you don't want to be shot. And then at the end of their turn, you're going to be able to redeploy and get the, the counter off um, on the bottom of turn one. So let's say we set up here. We have a strike squad up here. We have our 10 paladins here, 10 purifiers and crow back here. Um, and then we have a whole bunch of like, I don't know what else is going to be in my list. It's going to be like a bunch of like random other shit. Maybe a 10 man squad coming down from deep strike. Maybe a librarian coming down from deep strike. Uh, but these are going to be my three units that I'm probably going to be teleporting turn one. So if we have turn one, uh, these strikes uh, in, in the command phase, they have, they have scout moves. So they can basically just in the command phase, make this sticky. They can then back up away from the wall, still staying uh, under the cover. So that way they can't be seen. I'm going to assume that towering isn't crazy in this setup. Uh, then these guys turn one are basically either going to fly up to the top of the floor 11 inches and you can either spend one CP to shoot down. Let's say you have some targets out here. Uh, you can basically fly either up to the second, third floor so that way you get plunging or fly 11 inches out to here, making sure that you're you know either completely within because they still haven't changed that completely within the terrain feature so that way you can shoot out um, and get the first uh, counter off. Now again, you have sigil. So if they're shooting at you, this is the Grandmaster of the Paladins. If they're shooting at you, you basically just teleport away. Uh, and then the crows either just sit back here or they just advance up uh, 12 inches just to be in this uh, terrain feature to wait for next turn. So let's say if you don't have turn one, they have, they have first turn, you're set up like this. Now they have first turn, they kind of move up, get close to you, whatever it may be. Uh, now you're gonna have a lot more firing targets because now they're starting to move out, get on objectives, stuff like that. So your turn one, you're gonna deep strike at the end of their moon phase, you're gonna pick Crow up and his purifiers, you're gonna deep strike them within uh, three inches of their units, probably back here, or if they have some units over here, probably over here. So you're gonna either gonna go here in a forest or right there within three inches or outside three inches, and you're just gonna fucking unload on their characters or, or whatever. The other Terminators are gonna hop up on the second floor uh, or hop up over here on the second floor, the Paladin squad, and they're gonna have a lot of shots onto either a vehicle or whatever they wanna uh, kill with the units on this side of the table. Or you can just go straight everything on this side of the table Again, this unit has sigil. So they hop up on the second floor over here and they're shooting down AP2 with the side cannon. Wait till the sigil's procced uh, and then you can teleport them away. And then your strikes uh, in the command phase, um, they can't get picked up yet. So turn one strikes have to do their job and make this objective over here sticky. Then you probably have one or two more units that are over here. Let's uh, duplicate this. So strikes up here, making that objective sticky, strikes uh, strikes down here or another unit of uh, five, let's say Terminators are kind of just waiting over here. Uh, but you have basically three units to hop around every single turn that you need. But the main two things are gonna be the Purify Squad coming down Suicide Squad and just killing as much as they possibly can. Uh, and then the Paladins trying to kill as much as they can with Plunging Fire. If you can't get Plunging Fire, you're just gonna try and be 24 inches away and just shooting whatever they can try not to give them as much uh cover as you can because if you give them cover the ap1 doesn't really do too much i mean you're going to kill people with three up saves but two up saves you're not going to kill too much um so that's going to be the goal with the paladins and the uh purifiers the strikes are again doing their job they're doing that 
And now this turn, they're gonna either move closer or move away or stand there and, and shoot the purifiers. That's where you proc your one CP strat. So that way they get uh, plus one or minus one to AP. So they're uh, two up save in cover and then minus one to AP. Even if they have ignore cover, most of the ignore cover stuff only goes up to AP two. So you're gonna go down to AP one. Uh, so then you still have a three up save. So even if they're AP one ignore cover, you're gonna have a two up save either way. So a lot of stuff that ignores cover, you're, you're gonna be good. Um, and then the Paladins, if they have Sigil, you basically proc it and you hop out, out of line of sight, maybe to here, uh, maybe over to here, maybe back to here, or maybe just behind the wall or down below. So let's say uh, he shoots you, you're up top, then uh, Sigil procs, you then just go down behind the wall. Now you're behind the wall and that can't be shot at. And then on your turn, you can just move these guys up five inches and then charge and just be super aggressive with them. And then you do the same thing where if they end within nine inches of you uh, and you're not in combat anymore, you just basically get them out of dodge, put them back up uh, on your side of the table or they go, into, they go into reserves. So on your turn in deep strike, you just deep strike them again onto the top floor. You can spend one CP to come in within three inches. Uh, and then do that plunging fire. But this turn, since you proc'd Sigil already, you then in your uh, teleport assault phase, your movement phase, you have to proc the free to, uh, free CP strat to not be shot outside 12. That's why I'd probably put them back in my deployment zone so that way you're pretty far away. You're shooting, getting plunging fire, uh, and then you can't be shot at inside 12 inches. So that's kind of like the yo-yo effect is you literally just keep throwing these guys around, not being shot at, uh, and if you get charged, hey, you got 10 fucking paladins to either interrupt or, or try and kill whatever they got charged at. But most of the time, you don't want to get charged. You want to do the charging. So that's why they shoot 24 inches. You have 18 shots out of the squad. So you can try and shoot as many heavy infantry that you're afraid of as possible. Ignore the, uh, ignore the vehicles if they have a ton of vehicles. Most of the time, you're going to be killing uh, the infantry. Um, so if you have a... Um, let's make a uh, Dreadnought. All right, so we got our handy dandy little dreadnought right here. So the dreadnought could be just sitting in cover. Um, you could walk him in from reserves if you really want to on turn two. So let's say this guy comes in from reserves. You can come in the back table field edge, but uh, if he walks on reserves within six inches, your guys can teleport within six inches uh, up because you measure from the model when you're measuring um, if they're within. So the hull is tall. So you're measuring from the hall and then within six inches up from the paladin unit, they're within those six inches. So they get my uh, reroll ones to hit and wound. And with plunging fire, it helps out a lot. So this guy can walk on within six inches, be within six inches of, the, of these paladins, and then they can kind of do plunging fire. Um, if the purifiers want to hop back up and come back down within six inches, now you have two units to benefit from the uh, dreadnought reroll ones to hit and reroll ones to wound. Uh, if you keep them in your home base, just to kind of be, you know, the back end and 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 do that, you kind of want to keep your paladins at least near him to benefit from the from the dreadnought. So if the purifiers turn one come down and let's say here, because they had a bunch of guys out of their uh, their ruin, so they come down here. Uh, you can string one guy back to get within six inches of the uh, dreadnought, so that way the the purifiers. Reroll ones to hit and wound on all their shots, which is really scary. And then the paladins can hop up on the second floor, still be within six inches of the dreadnought, and also get reroll ones to hit and ones to wound. That's really our only rerolls in the in the game, <laughs> so we're gonna have to use it to our advantage. Now that is the best combo with the dread that you that I've been seeing right now, unless you bring Storm Raven. But again, uh, big knights kind of kill Storm Ravens like it's their job. Uh, all right, and then strikes. What you can do with strikes is once they get the sticky objectives up here, you can then teleport the next turn to be on your home objective, get sticky objectives, or teleport over here to get sticky objectives. Um, you obviously have to wait a turn, but they're going to be teleporting, trying to get you sticky objectives as much as possible. If you really want to, you take them off at the end of... Uh, or what, what really helps, I did this once, is they walk out to be outside of the... Um, objective and then when their guys walk up to the nine inches you then just get them out of dodge <laughs> and now they have nothing to charge so then they can't steal the objective so the objective is still sticky their fucking unit is just kind of shit it's kind of just chilling here because they can't charge anything uh and 
your strikes then come down next turn and either be on another objective or in the backfield and kind of you know causing some havoc in the back and then your paladins are basically just coming down and just shooting the units kind of in the open so you can use your strikes to be kind of like a come at me bro and then if they do you're like fuck i'm, I'm running away uh that could be a strat or if you kind of run them forward on in front of the objective and they do happen to charge you they have to be within base to base and when they consolidate they have to be within base to base so they can't kill or they can't consolidate around or charge around your strikes to get on the objective so that way this objective is still safe for at least one more turn because as long as they're not within three inches of it they can't consolidate towards it if they can't get into another unit or if they can't get on the objective they are literally stuck right here so if they charge your your guys you don't live uh they then die but now these guys can't pile in anywhere or consolidate anywhere so they're kind of stuck in the open so your fucking paladin squad just comes in within three you know, up on top of the second floor, and then they just blow up that unit. <laughs> so that that's that's really good. So that's another tactic with the strikes or the ten man um, purifier squad coming down and just being with outside of three inches. So if you want to come down, let's say one's here, you know, and you're kind of blocking in their uh, their army, kind of like this. So you're blocking in their entire army with your purifiers. So this is this is them, right? That's their enemy unit. This is your purifier unit coming in within three inches or right outside three inches. They then shoot everything. They can't move because if they do and end within nine inches of you, you're gonna just get out of dodge and save your 395 point unit. So I've done this before, which has actually helped a lot. Um, so yeah, so that, that's those are the tactics, guys. Hopefully, this is helping you guys out. Uh, I want to get Grey Knights to be consistent uh, and pretty reliable when it comes to the RTT and tournament scene. Right now, we're, they're still up in the air because they just released points for purgation, so they changed up most of our list. We were all running at least one or two squads of purgation. I was running three. Now it's fucking all over the place. Try some knights. Throw some knights into your list. Let me know on Discord what you guys think about them. Uh, the Rex Knight is still really, really good getting that free uh, strat that you can use. Uh, and if you kill it, that little guy pops out within three inches and then he can just fucking run away uh, and it doesn't count as a kill. So if your Kenner's Rex, let's say, dies up here, this little guy gets out within three inches behind a wall. And then on your turn, he literally just runs away. <laughs> and then next turn, he just runs away. And then next turn, he literally just runs away. <laughs> so it doesn't count as a kill. It doesn't count as assassination. It doesn't count as a uh, bring it down. So that could be something to try with the Canis Rex or just bring three Armagers um, and just reserve them, walk them on and just kind of, you know, blow something up in, in, in your shooting phase. Um, what else can you try? Big Knight, the Lancer Knights, 495 points, which is still cheaper than three purgation squads. So yeah, definitely try out some Knights now. Uh, and if you want to just go more infantry, just go straight infantry. Assassins have been doing good. Uh, the Calidus Assassin doing great. Kodiaz is a hit or miss. If they don't have a CP regen, he kind of just goes into reserves for three turns and then comes in on their on their table edge from reserves and, <clears throat> and then just sits there for behind enemy lines. So he's a really good, you know, solo behind enemy target with a two-up save. So that's what Kodiaz basically does most of the time. But he's pretty good for 75 points. Can't lie. But all right, guys, that is my video. Let me go, let me know what you guys think. If you guys uh, are new to the channel and want to support us on Patreon, go ahead over to that. If you guys want to get into the competitive scene with uh, competitive dirt bags, go ahead over to that. Uh, if you guys are on the on the Patreon, by the time you see this video, we're going to be doing a giveaway for the Patreons uh, page, which I think we already went over. Which is this: we're just giving away as much as we possibly can. That's for your guys' support. Thank you. Uh, and let me know in the comments below what you liked, what you didn't like, some other strategies that I missed that you've been running that has been working for you guys uh, and then dead, head over to discord so you guys can share that knowledge and help everybody out so we can get this uh, 10th edition great night train going for everybody uh, including myself so appreciate you guys good luck with everything and we'll see you in another video soon